going though? Where is where's the storyline? Wait. Eventually I found the storyline. I found it. And it is the same storyline that I feel every single African book. I am so tired of that. Please, please, please. This is a plea from the bottom of my heart. African writers, please stop writing about HIV and AIDS. Please stop writing about racism and apartheid. Please stop writing about poverty. I beg you, help us. Help our children dream. Help our children think. Write about, I don't know, some fantasy land underneath the Zambezi River and just give us something to imagine and get lost in. Don't tell us what we already know. We know about HIV and AIDS. We know what is done to families. We know about alcoholism. We know about drugs. We know about poverty. We know about unemployment. Oh my goodness, I am bored. Excite me, please. <sighs> All right. completely honest i was not impressed with this book i was not not by a long shot the cover is the most gorgeous looking thing ever the cover drew me in it's so beautiful on new year's christmas eve i beg your pardon i bought it and i thought wow i can't wait to start reading more books on southern and african authors heck on african authors as a whole i want to start this thing i want to get to know my people my continent i want to celebrate literature in, on my continent don't judge a book by its cover. I'll explain why I have so many of these. I will explain. I respect the author. I congratulate her on winning the Barry Rom Fiction Prize. Congratulations. Now let's get into the story. This story is centered around one main character. Her name is Jeannie. Her, well, her nickname is Jeannie. Her real name is Emojin Zula Nyoni. I pronounce it as you know how you say emoji. I pronounce her name as Emojin. I had to draft a family tree just by the way, just to keep up with all the names. This is the reason for this. There were so many plot lines, so many, like multiple storylines, so many plot lines in here. If you do not keep up, you're gonna lose it. The first hundred pages, we are introduced to the entire the family tree that I had to draft just so I can keep up. We introduced to it. All of it. It's information overload. Bam! She gave it to you. This is what happened. We are given backstories about every single person. And I'm not talking about little, oh, this is so-and-so. Nice to meet you. No, no. Let me start from the beginning. Okay. Stay with me. You really have to concentrate now. Let's speak about the grandmother and the grandfather of our main character i made notes so if i keep looking down you'll understand the grandmother's name was prudence ngoma she was a mother to golide and minente i will tell you who golide and minente is just now the grandfather of our main character his name was bafana Ndlelapi. however when he uh, I, I, there's a sort of metamorphosis theme. I definitely will touch on it. But he renamed himself um, um, after certain experiences or certain... He felt that the name he was given at birth did not suit him, so he renamed himself. And his name that he gave himself was... I'm looking for it. Lots of names. Hang on. Baines Digeti. Okay, he used to travel around with a Greek salesman and they used to sell like trinkets and little fake jewelry and stuff. And look, it generated income, it made him money. Uh, what he enjoyed the most was traveling around the country and seeing all these beautiful places. He absolutely enjoyed doing all of that. That gave him a sense of a wanderlust. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. A bigger part of So he really, really loved just being out and about. Um, then he... Um, met his wife which is the grandmother of our main character his wife when they met um fell pregnant with their first child who is now the father of our main character now the backstory the information overload is how um when the father 
remember he's a traveling salesman so he cannot always be home so when he did find out that his wife was pregnant i think then it was just a girlfriend no they did marry you see just stay with me it, <clears throat> uh, his wife was uh, pregnant with his son he did not see the son for years and years remember the nature of his work he's traveling everywhere so <sighs> he did not see his son for i think it was five years um eventually when he did settle down or calm down from his traveling work na working nature as travel as a traveling salesman um he meets his son for the first time and when he does shock of his life he sees his son and he's like <laughs> hang on is that oh that's that's him that's why didn't you tell me and the mom's thinking excuse me i don't see anything wrong with him so the story i thought my son is awake the story is basically touching on the point that it's it's very much nuanced it's very much hinted at okay towards the end of the book it's blatantly said but you need to read between the lines he is an albino and the father is so disappointed at this discovery not disappointed in the son no 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 it's it's clear that he loves his son but he's just disappointed that man I had this whole life plan that we were gonna travel top down literally <laughs> he bought a car that was able to do the whole top down thing we're gonna travel the country because remember traveling salesman wanderlust just always wants to explore can't be you know tied down to one place and now my son is an albino or has albinism albinism um his skin condition or his condition I am trying to be so politically correct when it comes to this because I don't want anyone to come at me. Um, however, his condition will not allow him to have this free traveling adventure that he mapped out for him and his little family. So what he does, um, he runs away again or, or foregoes his responsibility as a father. <clears throat> what is highlighted, however, is that every i think it was every month he regularly sent money to his wife and son um he never not once sent money but the mother was so she was not happy and she she sent the money back um she was pregnant with baby number two and that is minente okay that's the sister that's the aunt to our main character. I hope you stayed with me, okay? So, so far, I've spoken about the grandmother, the mother, the son, who's an albino, and the sister. Okay, now we're going to our main character. Remember now we have um, Golida Gumeda, who's an albino. He's the father of our main character. He goes ahead and meets the main character's mom, who is Elizabeth Ignoni. Um, she is the black Dolly Parton. I literally picture her as this tiny, wasted, big-headed woman. <laughs> Have you seen Dolly Parton? Just saying. I love Dolly Parton, just by the way. I'm just, you know, accentuating her character. Her. Moving on. So, I picture her as this beautiful woman who's just, has this love of country music and the the character sketch in the book focuses a lot on her blonde wig red lipstick i love the way they met i thought this to be so romantic that golide found her ankles to be the most attractive part of her body um, it's such a beautiful romantic passage in the book that literally speaks about when he saw those ankles he was like i have to have them those were the literal words like i have to have those ankles in my life <laughs> I loved it. I proceeded to ask my husband if he finds my ankles attractive. So moving on, um, she is a country singer. She loves singing. She dreams of going to Nashville and pursuing her country music career. Um, meets Golide. He promises her, girl, I will hook you up. I will make sure your dreams come true. They have this beautiful love affair get married it's it's beautiful it's 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 a solid good story um however golide has a little bit of a wonder not wonderless he's a bit of a dreamer he's a bit of a innovator that's the word he dreams of flying he dreams of being high up in the air 
he goes and studies um, overseas in Russia to become an aeronautical engineer. Uh, excuse me, I was like, what? Aeronautical engineer? This is a black man back in the 1960s or 70s. It was a long time ago. And he became an aeronautical engineer. Who? Do you know back in the 60s who became, who is black, became black, who became a black, who is black and became an aeronautical engineer? So when I was reading this, I thought, wow, this is such an amazing, you know, let's get into it. <sighs> he proceeded, he came back, fought the war, there was some sort of war, fought the war. <clears throat> and after the war, he shot down a plane and that plane he used its parts to build a plane. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? There's so much backstory to each character. You're like, why? Just why? Just give me a brief introduction. Let's just get straight into it. We don't have to we, we don't we don't need this. Oh, I did forget to mention that uh, <laughs> Bane Sticky to the grandfather of our, of our main character because of his wanderlust and his yearning to just pursue this traveling he took his top down car drove into the indian ocean and was never to be seen again again a lot of information i don't know if that was relevant but i suppose the author did need to let us know how he became non-existent i don't, I don't know i don't know we don't hear much about um, his mother after then. Back to the actual parents of the main character now. We're back to Golide and Elizabeth. Um, yes, Golide shot down an airplane, aeronautical engineer, studied in Russia, came back, fought the war. Um, he has this dream of building a plane and, and building it on silver wings. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe... maybe it's the material that planes are built in maybe that's why it's silver wings i don't know so he wants to do that and he dreams of doing that and he starts this passion project where he actually starts building it and the people in the village are so drawn to his vision that <laughs> i got a bit of cult vibes like it's as if he started a cult because they believed in his vision so much like <laughs> in the book they they um it, the writer it said that she, the writer wow from the my words the writer states that the people in the village would come and touch the wings and pray on them i was like oh it's giving me a bit of a cultish vibes but okay let's work with it anyway um it's a lot it's really a lot this this is only the first few hundred pages and it's going back and forth giving us a bit of history i'm thinking okay okay then it's giving us a history of the main farm, Beaufort Farm, and who was the owner there, and how the, <laughs> the daughter of the owner of the farm was in the plane that, um, what's his name, Golide shot down, and that caused her to be injured for life, like disabled for life. I thought, oh my gosh, there's so much interconnections, I was losing it. Again, I do appreciate how the author, even if she gave us an information dump, you can see that it, 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 she was stringing us along. Every single character had a string attached to them. And that string led to the next character. And that string led to the... And the story really did come along. It, it created this beautiful quilt, if you must. It really did come together so well. It's just in the beginning, you are literally tying yourself up in these strings you're like what is going on i literally had to start using sticky notes just to navigate myself through the characters now let's just get to the main character story because there are so many characters that if i had to really go in depth this entire video would not make sense i i did not make i did not understand myself the first 10 minutes of this video so i apologize the main story the, the main character she is exactly like her mom but she has her father's characteristics she has the gap between her teeth but she's this happy-go-lucky positive character she is there's a civil war or a war and her parents are nowhere to be found <clears throat> we literally do not know where the parents are as the book um, ends we can speculate all we like but we don't know what happened to them um she is then adopted into 
a family where she was the oh you see she was a childhood friend to a boy named marcus marcus then um, goes to america to go live with his parents was taken to america to go live with his parents years later those same parents adopt and take in Jeannie due to the civil war so she's well taken care of all is well she grows up goes to school until one day when she turns 18 she decides i'm done with this <laughs> packs up her bags and leaves and she leaves for the streets but on the streets is a man that again there's the string again this man was saved or his life was spared not necessarily saved his life was spared by the father of Jeannie who was Goli de Gumede. so Jeannie's father spared this man's life do you see how the strings are connected to each single character she goes and lives with him they fall in love she doesn't want to call it love because she feels like love is restricting it and not um, leaving it to grow and become what it wants to become <clears throat> excuse me so they live together for years and years until she falls sick and oh when Jeannie left she finds out that she has HIV AIDS um, we don't know how she got it we can assume because of the wars and what was happening and what people were doing to what the soldiers were doing to women and children we can assume that's how she got it but she had HIV and AIDS and at the age of 18 she felt that she was too much of a burden and she too wanted to spread her wings you know let's stick to the theme the theory of flight she wanted to spread her wings and just become so she left and went on to live with this man on the streets this man goes back to the home that he inherited from his grandfather of some sort beautiful mansion it's unkept but it's still an amazing beauty it's a roof over the head compared to the streets he's an artist he welds and molds steel so he created pieces of art um, these pieces of art were later appreciated by the city and the people in the city i don't know where the story is going there was just a lot happening and i was just reading and like okay where are we where are we going though where is where's the storyline where eventually i found the storyline i found it and it is the same storyline that i feel every single african book i am so tired of that please 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 this is a plea from the bottom of my heart african writers please stop writing about hiv and aids please stop writing about racism and apartheid please stop writing about poverty i beg you help us help our children dream help our children think write about i don't know some fantasy land underneath the Zambezi River and just give us something to imagine and get lost in don't tell us what we already know we know about HIV and AIDS we know what is done to families we know about alcoholism we know about drugs we know about poverty we know about unemployment oh my goodness I am bored excite me please <sighs> All right so I feel like that was the actual storyline I feel that was the message in the book um <laughs> yeah it's i'm i was not impressed like i said i was not impressed i was so frustrated i was so frustrated with the book this book just listen to this note i made it took everything out of me to pick up the next 100 pages of this book. I think I was halfway. Or I think I was 100 pages in. There we go. Remember the first 100, we meet every single character. Even the ones we didn't ask to meet. So true. We did not ask to meet all these people. I mean, I had to draft a family tree that has some, graft, <laughs> some grafted in branches. I don't know if you know the um, agriculture theory or agriculture principle of grafting in it's when you take a specific tree let's say the tree is going bad or rotting and you have to graft in the good branches just to keep the main tree alive that's what i did with this family tree i hope you appreciate my metaphors i'm working hard here 
<laughs> I had to draft a family tree that has some grafted in branches just to make sense of it all. Once I did that, I felt beat. I took an entire week break from that. <laughs> I was not impressed. Too many names to remember, too many storylines. As a reader, you can get a lot from a book, depending on where you are in real life. Um, what you take away from the book somehow assists you to navigate your experience. If I am going through something sad, I will be drawn to more sadness in the book. Even if the book is about all things happy, I will relate and find so much um, resonance with the sad things in the book. Excuse me, I think someone's moving a truck. So that's the one thing I realized with this book. So for now, my first time reading it, I'm sure I'll reread it maybe a few years from now, a few months from now and find something else. But these are the things that I felt popped up um, to me. I extremely enjoyed the name changing themes. Um, like I said, I created an entire family tree. I will insert it here. <laughs> um, I, I loved how the father, the character, the father of the main character, his name was one thing. He was born as one thing, was given a specific name. And then as he grew up, in an attempt to redefine himself, he renamed himself. The same thing goes for the father's father, the grandfather um, of the main character. He too, he was named one thing when you were born. You know, when we were born, we are given a name. But as you go along life, you redefine yourself, you rename yourself. I really enjoyed the author in the beginning of the book um, gave us a list of characters in order of appearance. That extreme, <laughs> that helped, that helped because there's so many names to remember and so it's multiple plot lines. It reminds me of the book Holes by Louis Sesha where there were multiple storylines in there and you had to keep up but there's a beauty about the multiple storylines because they do somehow they come together and when they do the story has such texture such depth and i i truly i enjoyed that in the beginning i was so frustrated so frustrated but i do enjoy the coming to the weaving of all these fibers um, the chapter headings however are the strings that hold the entire book together because the chapter headings if you are lost they do help you navigate the story or the book as a whole I thought that was cleverly done on her part. Every chapter heading has a name of a character and so you know who you're going into. And it's a nice flow of events. It, the structure still feels choppy. Literally, the structure of the book still feels very choppy and very, ah, oh, there's that, there's that, there's that, we'll meet this one. But the chapter headings, I thought that was cleverly done. It, it really did help a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So well done on her on doing that. Speaking of the information overload and how the author kept introducing new characters to us, or not necessarily new characters, but how she kept giving us backstories about the characters. Literally, I had 30 pages left for the book to finish. So by this time, I'm exhausted. I am so bushed. I'm like, I need to finish this book. I just need to finish it. And I'm done with it. I need to finish it though. I can't just leave it hanging. 30 pages before the book ends, the author decides to introduce us to somebody else. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Just why? Like, why? There is absolutely no reason for us to be meeting a new character or to be told a backstory about a character. It's, it's okay. I think we've met enough of them. <sighs> I felt it was unnecessary. I made notes. I felt that it was unnecessary. I felt that... 30 the book is about to end all i want to know is what happened to genie can we find genie can we find her can we discover what happened to her is she okay is she alive can we solve that mystery no no the author was like hang on hmm here's one more character for me to tell you about um meet so-and-so's mom why i i don't want no 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 let's solve let's solve the mystery let's let's solve there's a missing girl. Let's solve that. Let's, yeah. Book falls into the category of contemporary realistic fiction. I feel. I know 
some people are speaking about other look i say falls under the category of contemporary realistic fiction simply because there were some themes in the book that if someone younger had to read it a mother and a daughter there are themes in the book that are hard to have conversations about but because it's in a book it's easier to explore them like i said the hiv and aids the family dynamics um the there's no father in the home he the father's father didn't have a father in his home etc etc so the themes within the book give it for me that contemporary contemporary excuse me realistic fiction feel that there are hard topics that can be spoken about the speculation of what the soldiers did to um those around the village the abuse per se and the torture um the government politics um let me see what other themes came out corruption um media how a newspaper can turn um a village against someone i mean there was a <clears throat> a reporter who wrote a story about Jenny's father and that just changed the trajectory of his life because that story that headline um you know caused a stir in the village so those topics are easy to discuss if they are inside a book around a dinner table rather than bring them up nonchalantly so i thought that was such a good maybe i see why she won this yeah I think I see why she won this um, Barry Wrong Fiction Prize because she managed to bring up topics that are hard conversations to have. However, because they are in the book, it is easier for us to speak about them. It's easier for me to speak about um, corruption and politics and government than just to bring up whatever's going on in my country. Hey, God, don't even know. But to touch on it from this book, like, oh, remember this? What happened? This? We still don't know what happened to Jeannie's parents, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's easier for me to touch on it because of the characters in the book than be um, uneducated about what's really happening in today's life. So I think I see why she won it now. Touches on things about dealing with others who are different from you. The albinism, the HIV and AIDS. It's speaks about dealing with others with differences or dealing with death i beg your pardon there was so much death happening in this book so much oh my goodness i mean the first few chapters we read how the grandfather drove his car into the indian ocean kabam moving on so those topics really help bring out um they create conversation I really was frustrated with the book but when I looked deeper I, I saw the messages that she was um, bringing out so if you have managed to sit through all my ranting which was supposed to be a review which was supposed to be a critique I thank you you have done a great service for humanity <laughs> yes I will see you in the next rant slash review slash critique